beloved child of god don't you go anywhere you are viewing express word my name is paula don't you panic we just had a change of scenery in background this is express word and we're all about marriage love romance relationships sex communication proper that is i don't want you to go anywhere stay with me we are investigating the love stories of the bible when specific people met their partners we spoke in the last part about uh, Adam and Eve, how God joined them together, how they met. Now we're going to investigate and we're going to go in depth into the love relationship and meeting introduction of Isaac and Rebecca. Don't you go anywhere. The word for you at this time is this. Look for the signs. Ask God for a sign. God will answer even by a sign. It is all well and fine if you're choosing a partner, you're in that position, you're still single as a believer, as a Christian, and you're choosing a partner, you're looking out there. Ask God for a sign. You are going to see where there was a direct sign, an accurate sign that the, the, the servant of Abraham asked for in um, approaching Rebecca, before he approached Rebecca, he asked for a sign in prayer. And before he was finished praying, the sign rolled out exactly to what he asked for. And we're going to investigate this matter. Listen, whatever position you are at right now, whether it be in a rocky marriage, you are weathering the storms, whether it be that you have just gotten married and you are strong and and you are feverish with love and fervent in your love, you're not starting off. Or whether it be that you are dating, courting, or looking for someone, this romantic story is for you. God is going to place you in position where you would be begin to understand how does the woman react? How does the man react? How is the one for me supposed to be exemplified out of the love of God. How How is he supposed to be? How is the woman supposed to be? We're going to see character behaviors played out in the area of love and romance to let you to know when things are at peace, when you have the right one. And we are going to learn from these things because even if you are not positioned with the correct behavior, you heard me right, the correct attitude, the correct perspective in the way of relationships, love and romance, even in your marriage, the stories in the Bible, these romantic stories, which we live by the word, we move by the word, we go by the word of God, is going to help you and reposition you in that rightful place where you're supposed to be. So the word of God is going to align us and there would be no confusion in our looking, in our marriage, and in our dating, courting, and relationships. Let's look at Isaac. We're going to read. In your own time, you can read however I encourage you to read the whole of chapter 24, book of Genesis. That's the full story there pertaining to Isaac and Rebecca. I'm going to read and study with you and I want you to get a notepad because I have a lot of notes for you to take. You're going to see a lot of revelation coming out of the word. Things are going to be laid direct towards you. It will be a direct word for you. Genesis chapters 24 verses 10 to 21. Then we're going to jump to verses 47 to 53. Then we're going to jump to verses 61 to 66 and that's what we're all about at this time pull your bible i'm reading from book of genesis chapters 10. now just before i begin let me just give those of you a refresh of what is happening here an introductory abraham is very old at this time the promised seed his son which is isaac he's now a full-grown man and abraham told his servant he said go get get me a wife for my son Isaac get a, a wife for my son Isaac and Abraham tell him don't get her from this land that we are in the Canaan land no he said go back home from where I came from where God told me leave your kindred leave your woman your family and go into the land for those of you who know the story go into the land that I would show you so Abraham is in the blessed land that God promised him but he told his servant, he said, I don't want a woman for Isaac in this land. I want you to go back to my clan, to my lineage. That's just how it was at that time. And he said, go there where we left and get the woman from there. Now, this is how the love story of Isaac and Rebecca form, right? Here we have a sort of strange 
a situation where a servant was sent to fetch the woman. Wow. But I'm going to show you where the Spirit of God moved and Isaac and Rebecca connected even before they met. And everything was so perfect because a sign was asked for and God gave the sign. And this is how we knew we had the right woman. And I want you to know how you have the right woman, how to get that right woman in your life. And you say, Paula, well, what is a right woman and a right man? Well, hey, love, listen, I always tell you and I'll tell you again, the right man will do the right thing. The right woman will do the right thing for you. The right man will do the right thing for you and to you. That's how you know that there is a right man and a right woman. That's how you know when your marriage is right. Amen. So if you're not right at this moment, you can get right, brother. You can get right, sister. You can be that right husband and you can be that right wife. You can be that right boyfriend. You can be that right girlfriend. Amen. So let's look at those scriptures. So the servant went out, set out to go back to where Abraham um, former's original home was and he went on a, a, a lengthy journey and so here we are at genesis chapter 24 and verse 10 then the servant took 10 of his master's camel so he's packing up to leave and left taking with him all kinds of good things from his master let's pay note of what we are reading he set out from aram naharim and made his way to the tongue of Nahor. he had the camels kneeled down near the well outside the town. So when he arrived there in Abraham's um, homeland, he met a spring and he had the camels, all his um, luggage and journey and men who he went with. He had the camels kneeled down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening the time the women go out to draw water. So I, it was supposedly he set journey in the morning time and he reached there in the evening look at this then he prayed now prayer is of vital importance in that in finding that right person even after you find that right person in your marriage prayer is of vital importance look at how prayer played off here then he prayed oh lord god of my master abraham give me success today and show kindness to my master abraham see i am standing beside the spring verse 13 and the daughters of the town's people are coming out to draw water. So in the evening time, all the daughters of all the houses of the of the towns there would would um come out to dip water, jars of water, and to carry it back home. That's how it was. Okay. See, I'm standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the town's people are coming out to draw water. Verse 14. May it be that when I say to a girl, so the servant asks God in prayer for a sign that when i say to a girl please and he was specific and detailed you see that's what god has sent me on assignment to let you know you need to be specific and on detail ask god for a sign if you're on the search you're on the hunt you're not sure ask god at this time in your life even if you're dating ask god for a sign to let you to know if this is the right one, is this the right person? Who is the right person, Paula? The designated, orchestrated person by the hand of God for me. And that could mean that probably the person is not all prepared or coming in the package that you want him or her to come in. Maybe they are not fully prepared of, of all what God promised you you would get in a husband or a wife. But when we live by the Spirit, we walk by the Spirit and we move by the Spirit, you can ask God for an accurate sign today in this time in this hour in this season and god will give it to you that the person that you are looking at that the person that you are interested in that the person that you are dating is the one by asking for a sign please let down your jar so may it be that when i say to a girl please let down your jar that i may have a drink and she says drink and i will water your camels too let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. Remember the servant went out for Abraham to look for a woman for Isaac. Okay, so he said, this is what I'm, I'm confused. I'm just a servant. I'm not the man of God, Abraham, so I need a sign. And this is what I need you to do for me, God. Drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. So he's saying, here what? I'm going to test these girls at the, at the spring pool. 
and I'm going to um, rush out to, to, um, to them. And, I'm, and the one that I go up to, I'm going to say, please let me have a drink. And if she's kind and pleasant enough to say, sure, I'll give you a drink. But let her also say, you know what? I'll catch water for your camels and the rest of people that are in your accompaniment. He said, if she says that, if she responds like that, I know that she is the one for Isaac. She will be the chosen one. Wow, what a sign. What a direct, precise sign. Verse 15, before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel. So here's this girl named Rebecca. She came out. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother. So that's Abraham's brother, wife, um, daughter. Now, her. the girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please, so now he, he prayed his prayer already and now he's going to act it out. Please, give me a little water from your jar. Verse 18, Drink, my lord, she replied. She said and quickly lowered the jar in her hands and gave him a drink. Verse 19, After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have finished drinking. So here it is, She's, she responded exactly how the man prayed to God. She responded in that same manner, rhythm and behavior. Be careful how you respond, beloved, amen. <laughs> Verse 20, so she quickly emptied her jar into, into the throw, ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Verse 21, without saying a word, the man watched her closely, somebody, is looking at you closely on observance to see how you would behave what's your mannerism what is your response and do you have kindness oh my gosh <laughs> without saying a word the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the lord had made his journey successful let's stop right here let's go also i'm going to um um give you some revelations after let's continue with us our love story let's go to 47 and verse 53 wow i asked her so now um some stuff has passed within the story and the servant went back home to rebecca's house to spend the night this is what happened he was speaking to the family they were about to dine for dinner or for supper whatever you want to call it i asked her whose daughter are you she said so the servant is explaining to the family what went on. How did I met this young lady, Rebecca? She said the daughter of Bethuel, son of Naha, whom Milka bore to him. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. So that was explained earlier, although I didn't read that. But the servant is saying, I put jewelry on that father Abraham had given me and loaded up goods and good things to come and bring this bride. I put jewelry on for her after she had finished serving me with water and the camels and the men were with me. Then I put the ring in her nose and the braces on her arms and I bowed down and worshiped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. So are you observing what is happening here? That's just how it was in those times. Abraham had, um, the servant had handpicked someone from the clan of Abraham, his, his very own family. Oh, wow. Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Verse 49. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. What he's saying at this time is, well, here I am. I came back into Rebecca's home. And now I'm asking you as a family, will you let her come? Will you let her come with, with us back to my master's homeland in Canaan? Laban, verse 50, and Bethuel answered, this is from the Lord. What they mean to say is we can't argue with this because you ask God for a sign in prayer. And here it is, the sign rolled out in front of your very eyes, the same way you asked for it. So we can't argue with this. Laban, that's, that's Rebecca brother said, and Bethuel answered, this is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son. 
as the Lord has directed. Verse 52, when Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewelry notice and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. Let's stop right here. Let's also continue to verse 61 to 66. We're coming quickly to a close. I have five minutes alone with you. Amen. Then Rebecca and her maids get ready and mounted their cameras and went back with the man, the servant. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac, so here it is now, they left Rebecca's home and the servant is journeying back with the girl. He got the girl. He got the girl for Isaac. And now they are arriving back where Abraham and Isaac is, which is a far distance, of course, like a day's journey or more. Then Rebecca and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Verse 62, now Isaac had come from Belahi, Roy, for he was living in the Negev. Negev means south, side, south area. He went out to the field one evening to meditate. Notice something, the servant reached over there in the evening. And here it is, Isaac, now he's coming out in the evening to meditate and pray and talk to God. Notice the servant was very prayerful, prayerful before he met Rebecca. Here it is now the man Isaac is meditating and praying before God. Look at what happened. He went out to the field on evening to meditate. And as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. She realized this is the man that she, has, she is supposed to marry. Verse 66, then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. God will even send an angel before you. This is what we are receiving at this time before you to find the right person for you. Abraham told the servant, he said, the angel of the Lord will go before you. God will go before you. With, uh, God will send his angel to help you. You'll see that in Genesis chapters 24 verse 7. The right man, that good husband, will present all kinds of good things to you. From the beginning, Genesis chapters 24 and verse 10. How do you know that you have the right one? Beloved, listen, the right one will be coming, bearing gifts all the time from the beginning to the end. He will be a giver. He will be giving to you. Genesis chapters 24 and verse 10. Water will serve as a good sign. Genesis 24 and verse 11. A praying man will be a good lead. God will lead him to the woman for him. He will be led always. Genesis 24 and verse 12. The servant prayed. Isaac was praying. The servant prayed when he met Rebekah. Isaac was praying when he finally saw Rebekah. Amen. A praying man will be led by God on who to choose as a wife for his wife. Ask for a sign when finding the one for you. That's the word, the message we are getting. It is all right and okay. It's not cliche. It's not religious. It's not wrong. You need to ask for a sign. Let it be direct. Let it be detailed. Signs will be given you when you find the right one. The right signs will be given to you over and over again. The right woman will be willing to serve you and she will do more than you ask. You see, Rebecca was, was uh, humble as a servant willing to serve, not as a slave, but she, was, she showed kindness and she served as the man asked, give me a drink of water and she also offered to do more. That's how you will know man when you meet the right woman. We are just crossing our time just a little bit. The right woman will be willing to serve you and she will do more than you ask. She will show you kindness. Genesis 24 and verse 18 to 20. We saw that. A good man meditates and pray. You can and will find him there. Amen, sister. Are you understanding? Genesis 24 and verse 62. You see, we are getting messages here for men and for women. We are looking at the behavior of Rebecca and we are also looking at the behavior of Isaac. We are looking at their responses. So when I'm reading through these notes, I'm giving information for the man and for the woman. You wouldn't have to look down for the right one for you. You will have to look up. Both Rebecca and Isaac looked up and saw each other. Genesis 24 verse 63 to 64. We just read that. It said when they were meeting on the way in the field, Rebecca looked up and saw Isaac. 
Isaac looked up and saw Rebekah. What does that mean? Listen, beloved, don't drop your standards for anyone. You're a child of God. He loves you. You are his prized possession, precious possession. Do not drop your standards when it comes to dating, meeting something, marrying that person. That standard of holiness, that standard of, uh, standard of righteousness, that standard of, of li good lifestyle. If you are dropping your standards to be with someone right now, that could never be the right person for you. They are, if, you are, if you have to plunge into sin to be with that person right now, they could never be the right person for you. Don't look down but look up instead. Amen. That's a word for many of you all. You are being watched closely by the one who is interested in you. Genesis 24 and verse 21. A good man, remember the servant, watch her closely to see what she would do. Are you remembering that? A good man will bear gifts from the beginning. Genesis 24 and verse 22. The right one for you will see you as their success. The servant said, I was successful in this journey they will feel successful to have you genesis 24 and verse 42 we saw that when someone is from god no one will be able to say anything they would have no argument you heard what laban said laban said listen we can't say anything one way or the other this is from god you ask for a sign and it rolled out in front of you. The right one for you will see you as their success. They will feel successful to have you. When someone is from God, no one will be able to say anything one way or the other to argue. Genesis 24 and verse 50. When you marry the right person, you will increase and possess the gates of your enemies, meaning take over territory. Before Rebecca left her home, they blessed her. They say, may you increase Thousands upon thousands, her family told her that, and they said, "May you, may you, um, uh, may you possess the gates of your enemies." What does that mean? Take over your enemies' territory. Amen. You see, blessings come with the right union. Amen. You will move up. You will not move down when you have the right person. When you have the right person, you will move up. You will not move down. That person will not be depleting you. They will not be pulling you down. They will not be drinking you and draining you when you have the right person. So if the, you have someone like that and you're not married to them, you need to get rid of them, beloved. When you meet the right one, you will recognize them from a distance. Rebecca saw Isaac. She said, who is that? And Isaac saw Rebecca. They had a, they had a connection from a distance. Beloved, be blessed. Until we meet again, amen. Share this video with someone. There is something in it that someone needs to hear. Bye. Until we meet again.